You know, I hear people all the time complain about their job. They don't want to have a job. I'm like, man, you have to love your job. If you don't love your job, how are you going to go start a business and have people that work for you that don't hate their job? It's a gift to be able to have a job. Like, if you can smile, I really believe this. If I can smile throughout my life, even when I'm eating, like, yeah, okay. What else you got? I was telling Elena, she was down there boxing this morning and with Javier, and man, her kicks are getting awesome. And she had this look on her face. I said, look, you got to smile when you do that kick. You got to smile when you punch. You got to smile when you get punched. Because when you can smile when you're eating taking a punch, when things are not going well, when you're terrified and you can keep smiling through it, I think Churchill said, when you're going through hell, skip, move, run, and have a smile on your face. Like it doesn't bother you. And you become dangerous to other people when you can eat you're humble enough to say, yeah, okay, I'll do the dishes. Okay, I'll sweep the floors. Need motivation? Watch a top 10 with Believe Nation. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael and I make these videos because you are probably the most ambitious person in your circle, but you know you're capable of more and you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best. So today let's learn from one of the best, Grant Cardone and my take on his top 10 rules of success. Enjoy. Rule number two, focus on success. The first thing I might want to do before I start planning new stuff, take some of the stuff out of my garden. I need to make some space. I need to make some space. I need to remove the weeds. I need to mulch the ground. I need to take something out. I need to dig in, remove stuff, okay? Get the soil uh, ready for new plants and new trees. And a lot of times, in, in fact, every time in my life, for me to get for me to get from this place right here, where I am, I'm parked right now, for me to get from here to there, I have to leave here. That is the number one rule of success. I have to give up something. And for me, I've given up drugs, I've given up friends, I gave up a girlfriend that I was like madly, madly in love with, crushed me for years. I've done that, two of those. They weren't right for me just weren't the right people for me. I was in love, but whatever chemistry, it diluted my power. Um, I've given up a house in Houston, Texas, where I had friends and family. I gave up a house in La Jolla that I absolutely love, still love today, still miss that house today. 20 years I've been out of that house, miss it almost every day. Had to give it up though to become this guy. Uh, gave up a house, Elena and, and I gave up a house in Los Angeles. Magnificent, magnificent house. You know, I would flip my house where I live today, I would flip it off to go live back in that house today. People don't understand the sacrifices people pay every day. Every day, I still go to work today. I give up my free time to go to work because I got 107 employees that, that depend on me. For a paycheck, for inspiration, my, my company feels it when I'm not there. I know they feel it. Johnny the camera guy starts missing me. You know, the other guys start missing me. I got a great team too. My, my team holds everything together, but even when you're the, the king, you work, you, you're the man, the boss, you're the, you're the, the queen of the, of, the, of the empire, you're still working for other people. You still got to give up your freedom and your right to do whatever you want. Rule number three, aim to get rich. I remember when I was a kid, a man told me, he's like, Grant, patience is a virtue. And I looked at him and said, are you trying to get a head start on me? Because that's what it sounds like. That reminds me of how many people say money won't make you happy. You know, uh, rich people aren't happy. Look, folks, OK, why is this whole rich topic so sensitive to so many people? Why is it so many people, the moment you say rich, wealthy, get rich, get wealthy, the first thing that happens, everybody's like, rich people. They, you, you get all this negativity around being rich. Rich people aren't happy. Rich people are dysfunctional. Rich, pedi rich people are greedy. Rich people are selfish. You've heard all that. Money won't make you happy. Why all the disdain? Why the hate? Why the criticism for the wealthy? I'm not talking about people that inherited their money. I'm talking about people that worked from nothing and created an empire and create a true wealth that you can't possibly get rid of in a lifetime. People that will actually create so much wealth that they, they'll leave it for generations to come. The DuPonts, the Fords, the Carnegies. Bad people? Or did they do something really big? Look, when I talk about getting rich, I'm talking about you rat tapping into your full potential, not just financially, but in all areas of your life. My family, I'm rich. 
My company, I'm rich. My finances, I'm rich. My, bi- my other businesses are rich, not just because they have money, but because they're rich in ideas, rich in great people, rich in energy, resources, and creativity. Man, get rich, man. And if you don't want to get rich, please don't blame other people that want to. That's the rant for the day. Rule number four, practice consistency. How many times in my life I've, I've woken up like not sure? I think it started happening for me uh, years ago, like, like probably around 12 or 13. I didn't know what to do every day. What's, what's today going to bring? I th- maybe it's after watching so much TV and eating so much sugar. You know, I think our diets definitely have a lot to do with all that. But look, I want to give you something today about how to get out of the funk, the funky hunk dunk. When I, by the time I was 25, this thing went on from 12 to 25. At 25 years old, I was in so much depression every day. I was using drugs, alcohol. I was self-medicating constantly, making bad decisions. I lived in a 275 uh I mean, I just remember how much it was. It was $275 a month, and every other month I couldn't make the bill, the payment. I was late. Today, I live in this joint right here. I live up on the 33rd floor of this place. And completely different life today than I had then. 25, I went to a treatment center for 20, 28 days for drug addiction. I was using drugs every day. Hated it. Let me tell you something worse than drugs is how you feel about yourself. I hated myself every time I did a drug. Every time I smoked weed, every time, every time I did any drug, the moment I put the pill in my mouth, the weed to my mouth, something in my nose, I, I hated myself. I never felt good about using drugs. And so by the time I was 25, I had been using drugs for 10 years, but my problems started before that. My problems didn't start with the drugs. It started with my inability to manage this light grade chronic depression. This, for lack of better words, this, this idea that I wasn't good enough, this idea that, that, um, that, um, I didn't love myself. You know, that, that, you know, my, my mom gave, my mom quit on me. My mom told me, Hey, don't come around here anymore. My twin brother pretty much was done with me. My sisters both knew that I was in trouble and were like, Oh my God, you know, we're going to get a call on him today. The people I worked with, the principal at the high school I went to said I couldn't, couldn't win dog catcher in my 11th and 12th grade, told my mom that. My student, uh, my PE teacher said I would amount to nothing. I wrecked my car on my driver's ed test. I failed my driver's license test. I was fired from my first six jobs. Wouldn't leave the sixth one. Dude, I'm telling you, I was a loser. Loser, okay, I'm telling you, loser. And I didn't have to ask other people. Nobody had to tell me I was a loser. I knew I was a loser. So, look, if you've ever been there, I know there's people watching this right now. Maybe you don't even know who I am. You're like, who's this dude talking about himself, you know? I've come from that, where I was, bankrupt, spiritually, financially, physically. I weighed 134 pounds. That's 40 pounds less than I weigh today. I was broken every way possible. I didn't have any money. I was in debt. But worst, the worst thing, the worst of the worst of the worst was how I felt about myself. I got out of that treatment center and the counselor told me on the way out of the treatment center, uh, if you read my last book, Be Obsessed or Be Averaged, it was the first book that I really shared anything about my life. Of all seven of my books, that that one gives you a a kind of a look inside my life more than anything. And um, maybe what I'll do is in this, maybe what I'll do is I'll have my guys give you you a, a, a chapter of that book free. And um, it's not what I came here to give you. I want to. I do want to give you something, but maybe my guys could put a couple of different links in here for you. So, 
I got out of that treatment center and the counselor said to me, I think his name was Philip. I don't remember the guy now. I hated his guts then. I still don't think much of him. He said to me, guy was really confused. He was more confused than I was. He said, now that I look back, he said to me, he said to me, he said, hey, if you leave here, if you leave here and you don't give up, you know, because when you're there, you spill your guts, you tell them everything. And I told him I wanted to be rich and famous and, and help people and write books and, you know, be known all over the world. And he says, if you don't give all those ideas, I think he called it grandiosity. If you don't give up all these grandiose ideas of changing the world, uh, being rich, being famous, if you don't change all those ideas, dude, you'll never, ever, ever make it. You'll never stay, what do you call it? You'll never stay dry and sober. Also, to make sure you're actually taking action after watching this video, I've designed a special free worksheet just for this video. The worksheet will highlight all of the lessons learned in this video, as well as pull out our three favorite learnings and quotes that will inspire you to actually do something. The worksheet will also give you space to write down what your key takeaways are and your specific plan of action to make sure you're getting results. If you want the worksheet designed specifically for this video, absolutely for free, there's a link in the description below. Go click on it and start building the momentum in your life and your business. I'll see you there. Rule number five, create your own guidance. If you're, you're looking for, uh, if you have money and you have health and you don't have purpose and you don't have interest and you don't have excitement and you're not waking up every day what, like, like with like, hey, I'm looking forward to getting to the gym and working out. If you don't have those things going on, or I'm gonna go on a vacation, or I'm gonna spend time with my grandkids or my kids, or I'm gonna write a book or something exciting. If you don't have that, you're gonna burn, okay? So uh, first of all, let me just say, I don't know everything. I just know at 63 years old, I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm in the best financial condition of my life. And I'm the most excited I've ever been in my entire life. That was not true just uh, 16, year, uh, 16 years ago, 17 years ago. Is that right? 63, 12 years ago, I'm sorry, 12 years ago. It wasn't, that was not true. I was stressed, I was burnt. I had three employees, two and a half employees, and only half of those worked. And I was doing all the work. I was running all over the country. I was doing 250 uh, uh, days a year traveling, picking up checks. I was a salesman, basically I was a, I was a, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, you know, I was, uh, I was a salesman. I was out selling, pitching on planes. I was doing about uh, 100,000 miles a year on American and United, uh, buying a coach ticket, crossing my fingers, hoping for an upgrade, staying at the Marriott on award points. You know the game, right? I was away from my family. I had a new family at the time. I just got married. I was traveling every day. The quality of my life was terrible. And I made a decision to get off, I challenged myself to get off the treadmill, of that treadmill. Now I knew that I couldn't get off that treadmill if I didn't have something else to go to, so I started studying people that have scaled their finances. I needed money to work for me. I didn't need to keep working for the money. I had a little bit of money put away, but I was terrified of it, if you know what I mean. By the way, if you're running this channel for the first time, more and more people are using the YouTube channels and the Instagram people our age are using it to access information. I dropped, I've dropped about 5,000 videos in this channel about sales, marketing, starting over, scaling, health, finances, real estate. I started playing this real estate game hard about 12 years ago. I started spending more time investing in real estate than I did on picking up a sales check. I started pulling away from some of the old ideas that I had been sold as a kid by the banks and Wall Street, which was diversified. Retirement accounts, 401ks, IRAs. I took my IRA and my 401k money, that, and it was self-directed, and I basically took control of it and took it away from Fidelity and uh, Schwab and Wall Street. I took that money away from them, a couple things that I did. I went and looked at my money. I had money in savings accounts, checkings accounts, money markets. Uh, where else? I had some mutual funds. I had ETFs. I had 401ks and IRA. All of it either sitting in money markets or garbage, paper stock. And I pulled all control of that money back over. I also had equity in a home. I grabbed the equity out of the home. I sold the home 
and went and rented. I literally reworked the entire finances of my life. Just keep this in mind. Think about this. You don't have to go do it today, and you don't have to, you don't have to be right or wrong on this deal. Rule number six, learn how to scale. How do I grow my business 10 times, not one or two times? How could I scale my business out so that I have, maybe you have 100 customers or 200 customers, how could I have 2,000 customers? You got 2,000, how could I have 20,000 customers? This is what the big companies do. You got four employees that you don't like, how could I have 40 employees and have somebody else handle the 40 that I don't like? Because what's happening right now is people are scaling down when they should be scaling up. Rule number seven, never take advice from a quitter. If you don't like your financial condition, look at your environment. My, my financial condition has been an indication of the people around me and what I'm listening to every day. If you don't have something, I'm not talking about a book right now. I'm talking about you guys need to be buried in content, buried, immersed. Have, how many of you heard this, this saying, uh, uh, drink, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. You need to swim in it. You need to drown yourself in it. You need to immerse yourself, inject it into your arm. You need to smell it, breathe it, love it, drink it. Immerse yourself in whatever Kool-Aid you're gonna drink, be all in. No one's gonna come to your house and make your dreams come true. It won't happen. It's not gonna come through the TV. It's not gonna come to you on Facebook. It's gonna become because you have a place to go every day and get your head right. Your attitude, right? How many believe you're in the attitude business first? Yeah. Oh, wow. Seven people. Yeah, I'm all in, man. I'm all in. How many of you got people on your team like this? Man, yeah, yeah, man. I'm going to do good, man. I'm going to do good. I'm, I'm, I'm going after it. How many of you heard people building teams say, I can't find good people? Yeah? Well, what's the point? Why are you telling that to other people? Why do you tell that to other people? Why are you trying to make sense and not finding good people? You get what you think and say every day. I can't find any good people. Seven billion people on planet Earth. You can't find good people because you quit. You quit. So you just need to know the truth. When you criticize anything, you're saying something about yourself. See, I don't get rid of haters. I, I'm like, come on, man, bring it on, dog. Tell me about yourself. You talk about money too much. You ain't got any. Oh, you work too hard. You don't work hard enough. You too cocky. You ain't cocky enough. Why are you gonna blame my swag? Because you ain't got any. Huh? You left yours at somebody's house. Somebody told you you were an introvert and you bought into it. Right? Somebody said you're shy and you bought into it. Somebody said you don't need to have a business. You don't need all that. You don't need a jet. You don't need the big house. You don't need a bunch of money. Dude, you gave up. I didn't. Keep it to yourself. You don't need to be contagious. Okay? People quit this organization and what do they do? Oh, yeah. Right? What do they say? Never. Write this down. Never, ever take advice from a quitter. If you quit anything... Man, I quit going to the gym, it just didn't work for me. I don't need to hear that from you. I'm gonna get different information from the people still going to the gym, would you agree? Look, if you don't believe in you enough to invest in yourself every day, I don't have time, I got the kids, I got the wife, I got the marriage, I got the problem, I got the Boy Scouts, I got this. Dude, you're sold on something else. I don't even know what you're talking about right now. You're, you're manufacturing excuses to contaminate other people. I don't need to hear about all your problems. I don't care. Rule number eight, just get closer. If you're waking up today and you're not feeling it, I'm not talking about workouts either. Whatever it is, going to work, making a call, cleaning up something that you had to clean up, handling some problem that you have, and you're waking up feeling a little depressed, kind of down. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Just don't quite feel it. Everybody expects me to be up all the time, thinks I'm supposed to, you know, be Mr. 10X, Mr. 100% every day. That is never the case. Never. So look, if you're running this channel for the first time, subscribe to it. I'm going to share three things that I do to get me through this. 
And make sure you comment or like. I'm building this channel out. I spent the last 10 years building it out with content material of things that I'm discovering in my life and in my business in hopes that it will help people. And I don't have all the right answers. I just want you to know like 40% of the time I'm wrong. Maybe a little more than that actually. Even, I just gotta be right on the big things, you know? And one thing that, that has helped me, whether it was writing a book and finishing it, or starting my speaking career when I did it 30 years old, I was going door to door to businesses around America, flew three million miles, go to a city, I, I was living in Houston at the time, in Bel Air, Texas, and I'd fly to Salt Lake City and I'd call on business owners. I'd set a, an event two weeks in advance, commit to the hotel, fly to Salt Lake City, knew no one, no one knew me. I had no name, no books. Uh, there was no social media. And I never felt like doing it. I was scared to death. Had no clue what I was doing. Didn't know who I was calling on. Don't even know how much I believed in what I was doing. Like, I did believe in it, but it was like, you know, I didn't have any statistics or facts or success stories. <clears throat> and regardless of how I felt, just like this morning, regardless of how much doubt there was or uncertainty, uh, fear, No matter who you're watching or who you're following, whether it's a political person, a, a rapper, movie star, teacher, coach, parents, I don't care how much in confidence they put out, how much athlete, how much confidence or certainty that they push out, push out, like, like project, they wake up. There's days they wake up and they don't feel it. They don't feel it. They don't. They don't want to do it. They're uncertain. Uh, they're feeling some low grade depression, whatever you want to call it. Look, I woke up like that this morning. When got up, family's not here this weekend. Uh, Elena's got the kids. She's teaching them how to shoot guns this weekend, and uh, I'm here by myself. So I'm waking up this morning like I don't want to work out. I missed yesterday. I'm not feeling it. So what do you do? What do you guys do when you don't feel it? So this is what I do. I just get a little closer. This is what I do. I get a little closer, just like I did when I was 30 years old, starting my speaking career. Never thought I'd be one of the top, considered one of the top two or three speakers in the world when I was 30 years old. I wanted that, but I didn't know how I was gonna get to that. And what I did was, when I was having to fly to these cities, Salt Lake City, Winnipeg, Saskatoon, Toronto, uh, Vancouver, Chicago, New York, like, I had never even been to these places. I was literally flying to cities for the first time in my entire career. Didn't know the language, didn't know the, the culture, didn't know how they, they those little changes in, they, that happened between Toronto and New York, New York and Chicago, Chicago and Dallas, and Dallas and Salt Lake, Salt Lake and LA. Those are all very, very different markets and different people and different thinking. Dude, I was terrified. Okay, I'm doing this today to tell you I was terrified. I was so scared most of the time that it felt like not fear, it felt like depression, like I wanted to take the, flat, the, the, the sheets, just pull them over my head. So what I did to conquer that, to handle that, I literally would just get a little closer. I'd get myself a little closer to the action. Like this morning, I just got close to the gym. I actually went and walked by the pool. I have a pool in the same spot that we have a gym on the second floor here. And I walked out there, and as I passed the gym, because they're still doing the social distancing bullshit, um, there was nobody in here. I'm like, okay, there's nobody in here. It's a sign I'm gonna go in there and work out, okay? So, number one, just try getting a little closer to the action. Hope that helps you. Just get a little closer. You don't have to commit to doing it completely. Just get closer to it. I came down here dressed. 
Uh, I put that I put that on before I left, so I was ready. So I got a little closer. Second thing, do if it calls you, do it anyway. You know, I coined this phrase years ago. Do it anyway. A buddy of mine, about the same time I was starting my business, I was having a lot of problems in my life. I was probably, it was before I started my business. I was still in Houston, Texas. I was going through tremendous, tremendous amounts of uncertainty, doubt about myself. I was in a transition, a career transition. I just lost a job, starting my deal. And I went one year, one year without working. I've never ever shared this before. One year and I did not, I mean, I had a little bit of money saved and I was going through it. I didn't, I didn't literally, I, I looked like I was working every day, but in truth I was not working. My twin brother actually knew that and finally confronted me and that's what got me off my ass. But this guy told me, he's like, look, you wake up in the morning and no matter what you're feeling, no matter how much you hurt, if your eyes are bleeding, do it anyway. Rule number nine, master the art of selling. This financial statement on this page is for companies, individuals, and households. Every company, a country, a city, every company, individuals, you wanna make a note here, companies, individuals, and households. Okay, if you're a household, uh, uh, Bill, Bill, Bill's a household, he's got a household. I know he's got a household, he's gotta have a house. I don't know who's in the house. His household has a budget. He's got income coming in, expenses going out. That's a financial statement. That's what that is right there. Income, uh, uh, less expenses equals what's left over. Period, end of story. That could be Google, Facebook, your house. It could be a company. It could be a country. It could be a city. They're all the same. By the way, I go to Canada, Japan. I go to Singapore, Dubai, Detroit, and the financial statement will be identical. The language will change. The financial statements will be identical everywhere you go. The top line of every financial statement for a household or a company or a city is what? Revenue, income, or sales, okay? This used to be sales and then some accountant. How many accountants in the room? Some intelligent, smart person, okay? Said, oh, we need to change that to like, to like revenue. It used to be simple, sales, okay? And then somebody's like, oh, we gotta call that something better. Okay, we're gonna call it revenue. It sounds more professional. Dude, it's sales, okay? How many of you don't like sales? How many of you in the room? Let me see a hand if you don't like sales, okay? If you're no good at it, you don't like it. So that means everybody in the room's a damn master, sensei. How many of you love watching my guys on the, on the, on the, uh, on the, uh, on the up here uh, doing the sales thing? Dave, Todd, how good are those guys? Are they good? And then I show up around 11 o'clock and I show you a different variation. You're like, dang, dog, another level. You could be a black belt. That don't make you a sensei, right? So like, like I've done my thing, I've done my thing 30 years. There's a big difference between 30 years and six years. Like I know every little crevice and I'm still learning. I know little, little angles. Like one thing means a thousand things to me, not 10. You understand? Because I played the game a little longer. So you get deeper, you get sensei. So there's a lot of levels to the game, man. Sales is about revenue, folks. If you don't like sales, you wanna write this down. If you don't like sales, you don't like revenue. So get a t-shirt. I hate revenue. I hate sales, scratch it out, but I hate revenue. Because if you don't like sales, you're in trouble. At home, you're in trouble for your city, you're in trouble for your community, you're in trouble everywhere if you don't like income. Because you, unlike the government, can't print money. It's against the law. That's why the America, the United States government, the only product the United States government has is the printing of money. There is no other product. They print money so you work. You work, you'll never create wealth, okay? You wanna write this down. Well, no matter how hard you work, okay? Kevin can work his ass off. He can work 20 hours a day. He will never create wealth working. He will only create wealth when he invests. And rule number 10, the last one before some very special bonus clips is don't be scared of change. 
I'm about to move. I'm moving from Los Angeles, California, where I've been 22 years in California. My wife's been here 23 years. She came here to be an actress at 17 years old. And we're picking up and we're moving everything. I wrote the governor a letter three months ago and said, dude, you keep raising my taxes, I'm out of here. By the way, you should be doing that. You should be thinking about, hey, how can I avoid seven, eight, nine, 10, or 11% state income taxes? Most of you don't even know what your income tax is. You think when you buy something, sales tax is your income tax. I'm talking about the income tax you pay on earned income that you earned Jerry Brown didn't earn any of it. So I tell Jerry Brown, I'm done, dude. If you keep raising my taxes, they're going in that direction. We're like, okay, we're out of here. Now, I got to tell you, man, it is scary moving. It is terrifying to move. I'm like, oh, I'm going to move to Miami. I'm going to go live in a new place. We're going to rent a house for a while. We're going to figure out. We got to make new friends. We don't know anybody there. All that stuff, right? All the trouble, figuring out the calendar, the money it costs to move, all that. And then I'm like, wait a minute. What, what are you worried about, dude? You so pinned down to one place, you can't get up and move every once in a while? It, it, it reminds me of how many people don't want change. The way it was is in the past. The way it's going to be is in the future. So what is it going to mean? A lot of trouble. Me and my wife, the kids, new furniture, new house, new place, new friends. I got to talk to these guys here at the company. Hey, guys, a year from now, maybe two years from now, we're going to shut this thing down in L.A. and you guys are going to move over there with me. But look, change is good. Don't be scared of it. You're not pinned down like, like you were, like it's 400 years ago and you lived in some village where they convinced you that the world was flat. Remember that? I think that's why we get scared of moving. The world is flat. Don't leave the village. You'll fall off. No, you won't. You're just going to change. You're going to evolve. You're going to make new friends. Dude, if you need to pick up and go some other place to make your life better, your family better, to find great schools, to make more money, pick your shit up and move. All commitments require investments in time and money. All commitments. You cannot make a commitment without time and money being invested. Time and money has to be invested. You have to invest time and money. If it's not on your schedule, you're not committed. If you don't have money back by that time on your calendar, if it's not costing you money, or you don't have money deposited right there, you are not committed. Where you have your money is where your personal, spiritual, emotional, physical commitments go. Wherever your money is, is who you are most committed to. Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Citibank. You guys, many of you got more money at Wells Fargo than you have invested in your own advertising and marketing. Because you guys are committed to the lie. The big marketing scam of the universe. Save your money. Save your money. What you should do is you should get a good job. First of all, you should avoid borrowing money unless it's for something that we think is good for you. Right? So first of all, you should not borrow money unless it's one of our credit cards <laughs> where we give you points. And one day, you too will be able to stay at a Holiday Inn for free. Where, by the way, the buffets at the kitchen are free. You can eat all you want, not to mention that you're already overweight, but you could go there and eat all you want for as long as you want, by the way. If you just borrow enough money on this card to buy enough stuff you don't need, to pay us back one day if you can, right? And then during the week when you're not borrowing money from us, what you should do is spend your time getting money to pay for the bullshit belt that you bought and put on your credit card that you can't write off by the way. So this is what Americans are doing. People all around the world spend 40 hours a week running around, hustling. Bop, bop, bop. Hey, can I buy it? Yeah. They get $100. What do they do now? They run over here to the bank, drop off the 100 bucks. Then they run back out, do another 40 weeks, pick up $1,000. Man, I had a great week, didn't I? Bang. And then they run over here and drop it off at the bank. These are the good Americans. The bad Americans go pick up 1000 bucks, go to the club and blow it. The good Americans run, run around collecting $1,000, $5,000, $10,000. Hustlers, hustlers, man. Hard workers. They, they get sophisticated. Uh, I'm gonna put a little money in the bank over here, over here at Wells Fargo. I'm gonna have a little over here at Citibank. I'm gonna spread this sh around. I wanna be a slave to many, not a slave to a few. 
I'm going to give a little to Bank of America. I'm going to give a little bit to Citibank. I'm going to give a little bit to, to the Wells Fargo. I'm going to give a little bit to Fidelity and Merrill Lynch. I'm going to give a little bit to my IRA and my 401k. I'm going to bust my ass. I'm going to spend 40 years killing myself to make sure all these institutions have my money. Where they pay me nothing for the sake of security. Right? And then you guys look up one day and you're like, where's my money at? It's in all these accounts. By the way, what do those people do with your money when they get it? They call me up. Hey, Mr. Cardone. <laughs> we got another dummy. <laughs> Guy spent, God damn, he must have spent 160 hours, put together a little bank, extremely disciplined, dumbass. And, and he saved $100,000 with us. And we'd like to know, Mr. Cardone, if you would like to borrow that money. His money. <laughs> yeah, I sure would. Because we know, Mr. Cardone, that you'll put that money to work. Okay? This guy that gave it to us, all he wants to do is work. I'm like, yeah, send me that money, bro. Send me that money. Okay? And they, by the way, they're not done calling me. They're going to call nine other people. They're gonna take his hundred grand and they're gonna say they're gonna they're gonna lend it out nine hundred thousand dollars of it. And this is the banking system. And that is debt, by the way. That US dollar. Okay? They're basically multiplying money. If the bank doesn't keep it, why do you spend all your time giving it to them to keep for you? People say the dumbest things. It could be family. It could be your wife, your husband. It could be a, a mom, a dad, an uncle, an aunt. It could be your kids coming from school. People say what they think. And what they think will be what they say. And what they say and think often enough, long enough, reinforced enough, I promise you, will be what they do. Okay? So look at some of the dumb things you say like this. Here's one dumb thing people say. Time heals all things. Really, you get a splinter in your foot and you don't pull the splinter out. You don't look at it, confront it, and say, I gotta pull that little booger out. I gotta pull that little splinter out. If you just leave it there, you might get used to it. Yeah, you'll get used to it. 30 years goes by, you still got a splinter in your foot. Who knows that splinter gets into your bloodstream, goes to your heart, spikes your heart, kills you. Time does not heal all things, folks. You know what heals all things? Taking a look at it. Having the courage to look at it. Hey, what happened to me? How did I screw up here? What, what hurt or what pain or what happened that I had a loss? I see people go through life with all these losses, unwilling to look at them, all crippled by the time they get older, not old, but they looking old, because they believe that time heals. Look, time heals when you confront it, when you look at it, when you pull the splinter out and take responsibility for it. Don't believe everything you believe. You know what I'm saying? Because some of the ideas you got, they just dumb. And dumb things will cause you to do dumb things. The reason the guys on Wall Street and the gals on Wall Street make so much money, okay, is not because they're, they're, they're like capitalists and they're terrible people. It's because they're surrounded by people that are making money, man. They're accountable by their stock price. They're accountable to their production. They got people around them that expect them to win and do well. And also they're going to dinner, waking up at breakfast, working out in the gym with other people that are winning big in life, okay? So you need feedback from your environment and your network. Fourth thing you need is you gotta have, fifth thing you need is you gotta have a network of people that are encouraging you to kill it. You gotta have the right network. You gotta have a LeBron in your game, man. If you're playing in the NBA and LeBron's like, I'm going to take you under my wing, bro. Okay, Kobe's like, hey, man, I wanna, I'm coming back to be with you, man. What, would you deny that? Okay, Michael Jordan, I want to be with you, man. Mm -hmm. Tiger Woods, I want to golf with you. Come on, guys. What are you doing? You cannot do this alone. You cannot do this alone. Are you kidding me, man? Let's say you want to be a surgeon and, and a top surgeon in the world is like, I want to take you under my wing. What are you going to say? I, I, I'm too busy. This isn't a magic act. These are basic skills. And basic skills are duplicatable. And the reason most salespeople have such trouble is because for years we have been trying, sales professionals and the gurus have been teaching uh, manipulation tactics. Dodge the question, don't answer, control the customer, uh, the, the whole neuro linguistics bull. 
These are gimmicks. We have never hired one person that had a neurolinguistics background that worked for us successfully. So you guys that are in the LNLP stuff, I'm just telling you, we've hired hundreds and hundreds of salespeople. I've been with tens of thousands of salespeople. I have never seen one person that got into this neuro bull that was a successful salesperson over long periods of time and did not bring drama to our organization. I don't want drama, dude. I want production. So, so when, when he sits a certain way, I don't start thinking about, man, I'm, look, imagine me in a sales, sales presentation. I'm like, I got to be like him. And then now I got to be like her. And now I got to be like him. Guess who you can't be when you're doing that? You. You, man, what a diss. I want to be me. The power resonates for me. My truth, my authenticity, and my transparency. Okay? So if you can't do that, you can't build, you can't build a business, and you certainly can't duplicate. I never ask him to be me. I'm like, hey, bro, when somebody says that the payments are too high, what do you do? What do you say? Well, I'm with you. Everybody try that. No, no, I didn't say it like that. I said, I'm with you. See, and I'm with you. Hey, man, uh, hey, the price is too high. I knew that before you did. <laughs> Everybody try that. Okay, see, see, I, I'm, I, he, he gets to be him, but the words will work because all I'm doing is basically agreeing with the customer. This isn't a trick here, okay? Uh, our, this course is, uh, I, I'm doing a dinner tonight for $25,000 at my house, okay? I think we got two slots left. The entire $25,000 goes to the Grant Cardone Foundation. Any of you want to put 25 grand in? Please, see one of my people, come have dinner at my house. We'll spend a couple hours over there. The money's going to go to help kids. Some of you in the room immediately say, oh my God, 25 grand. That's a lot of money. Man, I know that. You don't think I know $25,000 is a lot of money? I'm the one that decided what the freaking entry would be. I said, what would be too much? 25 grand. 25 grand would be a lot of damn money. Somebody gonna be like that, damn, that's a lot of money. Okay, and the people that it's a lot of money, that think small, that go small and don't wanna help, won't come to my house and have dinner. And the people that are like, dude, I'd go spend two hours with that cat, man, for 25 grand, get pictures with him at his new home, with his family, with, with eight or 10 other people and the money's going to charity and I get to write it off, I get to bang the IRS. Who hates the IRS? Well, this is, this is a chance to give them a good Okay, so you see what I'm doing? I'm handling all the objections right now. I understand 25 grand's a lot of money, man. I know what you gotta do to earn 25 grand. You gotta do crazy stuff to earn 25 grand. And if you keep thinking that, Earning 25 grand is always going to be a problem for you. Hopefully for everybody in the room, one day you're going to be able to earn 25,000 every hour. Every business. I have five companies now. We'll do 100 million this year. I started every one of those companies with no money. Zero money, man. Just hustle and grit and courage. I've called on people I didn't want to be with. I've done things I didn't want to do, okay? It is not about doing what you love. It's about doing whatever it takes to make your dreams a reality, to be closed and stay closed. If you're not closed on your product, if you're not buying your own product, why would you expect anybody else to? Man, 400 bucks is a lot of money, your prospect says to you, $400, do it. Listen to me, man. You're 32 years old, you've been trying to save money for 20 years and you hadn't. Do it and do it now. I don't need anything special here. I'm not gonna be empathetic. Quit being stupid, write the check. I don't know if the compliance guy likes that or not, but I know this. Look, if you believe in what you're selling, how many of you believe in what you're selling? Then close the deal. Then close the deal, okay? Learn to close and you'll never be without work. You'll never be without money. You'll have an organization that is booming in affluence. You'll have a pipeline full. You'll have appointments filled up. Right? I call it, a, a, a group called me yesterday. I'm actually trying to do a deal with CNBC and the guy says, I'm interested. I said, good, I'll be there tomorrow. Call me back. I'll be, I, I'm flying into New York tomorrow. What am I trying to do right now? By the way, I was supposed to be here. I'll fly into New York tomorrow. I can be there tomorrow, Mr. Ackerman. Okay, how does that work? I can't do tomorrow. 
I was going to be here anyway, man, trying to close the deal. Let me close the deal. I'll figure out how to be in two places at one time later. Right? You, some of you in the room, they're like, hey, I can see you at 4 o'clock on Tuesday, right? And, and the customer says to you, I'll, I'll see you at 4 o'clock on Tuesday. Too. Let me look at my calendar. Like, like, you're so busy. Dude, that is so old. That is so old. And it's dishonest. It's dishonest, man. You want to see me Tuesday at 4 o'clock? I give you Tuesday at 4 o'clock. Agree to it. Done. Done. I'll call you if something changes. If there's an earthquake between now and next Tuesday, Tuesday morning there's a massive earthquake and I can't be there. You think everybody will understand? Commit first, they're going to rest out later. Close the deal right now. Fill your calendar up. Your calendar's got the devil all over it. White space on a calendar and you will meet the devil. You don't need to die, okay? You go two or three days without anything going on, how many of you start having doubts? You're in hell. Oh my God, this ain't gonna work for me. There's nobody coming in. I'm not gonna hit my target. Okay, I know what I'll do. I'll lower my target. That's the devil doing that, man. That's a criminal. Never ever, if you're taking notes, never lower a target. Never lower a target. Never lower a target. Your mom and dad would tell you to lower a target. A manager might tell you to lower a target. Be reasonable. Be reasonable with yourself. Just bring it down a little bit. No, man. Criminal products are created like that. A guy sees the girl that he wants. That's the girl. She says no. He goes to another girl. Right? Gave up on his dream. If you're going to give up on your own dream, how are you going to build an organization? For me, like I was always scared of money, you know, uh, and, and I was terrified of it. So, so like if you look at still today, like I look at the bill of everything. It's a bill it, of everything? It, if something costs something, I want to know how much it was. Uh -huh. And so like how much is it? Like I'm going to ask that question, whether, whether it matters or not. I'm, it doesn't matter where I get in my life. I, I don't think I'm ever going to be free of how much was that? How much was the dinner? How much was how much this? was dinner? How much was the tip? How much was the coat? How much was the jacket? What did the, you know me? Uh, me and Elena, like Elena's, like, hey, it's going to be fine, man. Like, look what look 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 at what you've done. We cannot spend this. And I'm like, how much was it? I want to know how much it was because when I grew up, do you had to know what things cost? Mm -hmm. And so the point your your question about money is it's a terrifying thing because. It's the one thing in life that, you know, the NFL is not going to give me the ball. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm never going to get a chance to golf. I can't win in those environments. But with money, everybody gets money. It's the one place where everybody gets it. And now what do I do? Mm -hmm. And I, I can lose it now. So it's a terrifying concept, like, like power. You know, very few of us ever, ever get any kind of influence or power, right? Once you get it, you're like, hey, what do I do with this? You know, am I going to do it? I'm gonna, am I going to do the right things with it? Mm -hmm. And so I think people withhold themselves because they don't. We're not educated about money. We don't know where it comes from. We have a lot of misinformation about it. Our parents terrified us. You know, money doesn't grow in trees. Uh, save your money; it'll save you. All these 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 things our parents told us because they were enamored mm -hmm. uh, or or encumbered with the same kind of liabilities around money. Right. I don't know how to get it. I don't know how to keep it. And the, th the third, the worst part that we're all at is I don't know how to invest it. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll, some people get good at getting it. Very few actually. Fewer people at keeping it, but probably more than getting it. Mm -hmm. There's probably a big group in America that have learned how to keep money. Because they're afraid to lose it. They so don't want to invest it. it. They don't want to use it. They don't want to, you know, um, you know, Kanye talks about this, how white people, how white people save all their money. And they just keep it. They just store it. Like I had a, an uncle, he buried everything he ever made. <laughs> it went in the backyard. Wow. The other uncle was, was um, he was he was a guy that bought, he, he, he worked hard, very, very frugal, Italian descent. Mm -hmm. And he would uh, buy, buy real estate. But it was always buy low and sell high. He actually never sold anything. But that was the concept, buy low. Buy the cheapest, lowest, get everything on a deal. If there's food stamps to be gotten, you go get those food stamps. If there's a if there's a government deal, get it. If it's Section Eight and the government will pay you, pay it. So both these guys, different kind of mentalities, were extremely frugal. Mm -hmm. My other uncle was uh, worked in a refinery. He basically saved all his money, paid everything off, got out of debt. That was their lifestyle. My dad died when I was ten. 
So he paid all his debt off, had everything paid. And, and so that's all I had, right? Everybody around me was like, get money. Keep it. Keep yeah. it. Don't use it, you know, but you, but you should invest. But nobody ever learns that third one. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think we're just a bunch of people walking around terrified of this, this apparent appearancy of it's scarce. Right. And it's not. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, it's not, there's nothing scarce about it. If you're reading a book, okay, you're listening to music, going to an event, uh, speaking at an event. Let's say you're speaking at an event and it's the, it's the seventh hundred time you did that presentation. You gotta show up new again. Johnny comes to work with his camera and we're doing a show today. Johnny needs to show up new, looking for new angles, new colors, new. You gotta show up every day new, folks. You're new, man, you're new. Ladies and gentlemen, you're new. Every day you're new or guess what? You're old. Nobody wants old. I don't want to get old. I don't want stale. I don't want yesterdays. I don't want leftovers. I know, I know, I know, I know when somebody's repeating something rote. They're just giving me the same. I don't mind some bullshit, but it's gotta be fresh. I need some fresh bullshit. So I don't mind, I don't mind a little bit of bullshit. I just don't want the same thing. Okay, that guy's told that story a thousand times and it looks like the thousand, thousand times. Not in a good way either. I'm making $2.4 million a year. If I could figure out how to get another $200, that's called value add, VA, value add. If I could figure out how to raise the rent to 200 bucks, 531 units. See, that's why the number of units is so important. 531, $106,000 times what? is what, one point? See, that creates another $1,274,000 of income a year. I'm already making $2.4 million a year. Bam! That traffic jam. Okay, I got more cash flow. I just got, I don't have to go work. I don't have to beat stuff up. I don't have to go Uber. You guys are, I'm gonna go Uber. To what? What you go Uber to? You end up with $7. Same energy, folks, same energy. Spend the energy going someplace, getting a vehicle that can actually get you to freedom. I don't want money. This money, I've had this money here the whole time, okay? It ain't gonna do anything. How many got money in the bank right now? It's useless. Money is useless until it is put to use. People earn money and then they spend it. And you're just doing this thing. Comes in, it goes out. You have to have multiple exits on the way out. How do I get out of this deal? I know people that have bought real estate that they're like, it cash flows, but they're like, I, cannot, I can never get rid of this piece of property. It's always gonna be a problem for me. Hang me around my neck. But it pays me a little bit of money. Okay, now if it's only one unit, if it's only one unit, folks, and it makes you $500 a month, it's still only $500 a month. Everybody agree? That's why you don't wanna go small. You gotta figure out how to do it big. If you do it big, if you do it right, if you have the right, right location, the barriers to entry, if you have the cash flow that you need, if you get good debt on it, I promise you, you will not lose money in this space. Warren Buffett said, don't lose money. Number two, what? Don't lose money. Number three. Exactly, so when, when, when I read that, I'm like, don't lose money, don't lose money, don't lose money. What do I invest in? Oh, invest in something that doesn't lose money. Don't speculate, don't buy stocks. Like, I don't wanna trade a piece of paper for a piece of paper, it's a piece of paper. When you go buy $20 worth of Google stock, what do you get? You get a piece of paper back. It's all made up. Kids steal it anyway. Okay, I want something I can see. Would you agree? Okay, I would rather have that, that, that money. I'd rather take this money and say, okay, here's $100, here's $100. I'm gonna take the $100 and I'm gonna buy a flip chart. This flip chart is more valuable than that $100. If I use it, everybody agree? Yep. Okay, so I want you to write this down. Quit saving money. The, the banks have brainwashed you. 
Save your money, save your money, save your money, save your money. The, the, the Wall Street also did this. Stay liquid, stay liquid, stay liquid. You want liquidity. No, you do not want liquidity. You want to be illiquid and you do not want to save money. You will never, ever experience great change in your life unless you're willing to give up something that you have right now. Every single time in my life, I have had to give up something I wanted. So, and I'm not talking about getting rid of the bad stuff. You gotta get rid of something that you actually work for to get. Might have been the house. It might have been, oh, my kids are in the best schools now. It, it's gonna be something painful for you to get to the next place. You have to give up something that you worked for really, really hard. So I sold my house. One day I had this cognition, hey, to get what you want, you have to give up what you have. That has been true for me throughout my entire life. I had to leave Lake Charles, Louisiana. Went, went to Houston, had to leave Houston once I got comfortable with my community and my friends. Had to leave San Diego, had to go to LA. LA is a pit compared to La Jolla. Nobody goes from La Jolla, California up to Los Angeles. Nobody does that. You'll leave Kansas City to go to Los Angeles because you wanna be an actor. I met Elena within five minutes of arriving in LA. I sold my house, I sold my house. I didn't leave it vacant as a backup plan. I left this house, okay? Like I couldn't buy this house today if I wanted to. It was so, like it was a precious little treasure. I had to give that up. By the way, I had to give up being the mayor of my little town. Everybody knew me. There wasn't a restaurant I couldn't walk into. I could always get a seat. I could always get the best seat. I had it right in my hand. This is what I'm telling you guys. You have to be willing to give something up, and the moment you do, you better have your partner on your side. Whoever's in your life, mom, whoever's the big influence, that significant other person in your life, that you're gonna consult, that everybody's gonna consult. Every one of you are gonna, hey, what do you think, should I? You better have that person on your side. In my case, I was by myself. So my consultant was like, you gonna do this, dog? I called my buddy, Dale. Dale, you think I should? He's like, you're miserable, bro. You got everything you want and you're miserable. He's like, what, what do you have to risk? Sold the house, went to Los Angeles, lived in a hotel. I went from a, a house on the ocean to living in a hotel. Uh, the hotel room was probably like, I don't know, maybe the size of the stage. So please, please do whatever you gotta do this weekend to figure out whatever you gotta do to get rid of whatever is holding you back, most of which is something you worked hard to get. Okay, maybe before the weekend's over, you could write down two or three or four things you worked really hard to get that you think you're supposed to keep. You got them already. You got it. You already did that. You don't have to keep it. I'm 63 years old. You know, I'll be 64 in March. And, you know, I feel like I'm like 14 years old, man. I'm like, let's roll. Like, let's, let's go. I'm ready to run through walls and, you know, fly and learn new stuff. I'm studying uh, cryptos right now and the metaverse and like what happens and when do I make a play and do I make a play and what is all this? So, you, you, one, number one, you have to stay curious. Number one, curious, you have to be curious. When Clubhouse came around, Clubhouse is an audio app, if you don't know what that is. A couple of years ago, most of the people in my office, including Jared, was like, man, <laughs> ain't nothing, there's nothing there. You know, I'm like, oh, there's people there though. There's people there. And what I discovered, because I was curious about Clubhouse, is not because I was curious about social media, I was curious about people. To me, I get energy from people. And so, um, I've been in rooms where, uh, Alan, have y'all met Alan yet? So Alan, Alan saw me go in a room one night and he texted me, he's like, what the hell are you doing in this room, man? And I said, well, what's up? He's like, get out of this room. And I said, what you worried about? He's like, you're the only white person in the room and the title is white entitlement. <laughs> and he sends me a little sweaty emoji. I said, bro, where, how am I gonna learn about white entitlement with white people? Like, you gotta be curious, folks. Just because it has nothing to do with you doesn't mean your market's not there. And for me to be able to market to a market means I need to understand how that market thinks. So one of the great benefits of me being curious, particularly about two-way communication on, on social media, the feedback, I'm not looking for likes and comments. I'm looking for something, some electricity in the moment, what you're talking about, the drive. 
potential, potential, an idea. Like all my ideas come from, I don't fabricate ideas. Everything you see me do happened. It was happening already in the universe. I don't, I don't create anything. I just grab something that's already there. And I grab it out of something I hear. So the Supreme Court today announced that it kicked out the mandate uh, for the vaccine. I'm like, hey, man. Okay, good. you like it or don't like it. Y'all need to get on one side of that story and start talking to people about it so you gain that audience. You need, to, you need, oh, I don't want to be political. See, that's stupid, man. You know, there's nothing that raises more money than politics. Nothing. There's nothing. And most of it's just a scam. And everybody knows it. They're like, I'm throwing in. They ain't throwing in for their side. They're throwing in to keep the other side that they're worried about. The point of the story is there's energy there. There's tremendous amounts of energy that you want to you wanna tap into. If you could walk the line and play both of them, that'd be super cool. Very difficult to do that, though. So when that came out today, I'm like, good job, man. Like, I got to take a stand on that. Now, will I lose some people? 100%. I don't care who I lose. There's 8 billion people on this planet. I'm worried about who doesn't know me. So the way to protect your brand, the way to protect your brand is to expand it. That's the only way to protect your brand. And you know, I'm always keeping it real with you. What has happened to our country that we make our idols and our icons and our heroes, rappers and entertainers and ball players, and then we show disgust for a businessman that can bank 50 million a year or 20 million a year? What is wrong? Look, when a guy can go out and make passive investments, great decisions, execute, show tremendous discipline, okay, and disconcert between good investments and bad investments, and then make 20 million or 30 million bucks, pay three or four million dollars in taxes, three or four million dollars to his charities, his churches, his community, helps out with groups of people, and, and we have discontent for the businessman that's out there year after year making great investments, great decisions, showing leadership in the marketplace. Look, that marketplace out there, that economy is the most savage, most difficult playing field in the world to negotiate. Yet, who do we admire in our culture? Rock stars? Look, these guys got great skills. Kid gets out of school, makes 12 million a first year, and, and we make posters of them in sweatshirts. And, and you put their kids in their jerseys. But what about the business people? that make our economy work, that pay the taxes, that make the schools work, the churches work, that make the, the fire department, the police department because they pay taxes, because they're out there making great investments. Look, admire business people that are able to bank year after year. Admire these people, study them, learn from them. Don't be disgusted with them and turn off anybody, anybody that would suggest to you that making money in this country is wrong. Look, don't envy business people, admire them emulate them, learn from them. Particularly these guys are doing it year after year after year, not just on income, but on wealth development, because that's where you need to be, that's where you need to be thinking, that's the economy you wanna create for yourself, your family, your household, and your future. Man, did you hear that the, that the person that won the lottery, I got two points to make here, the person that won the lottery is 84 years old. Her name is Gloria Mac McKenzie, here in Florida, she'll pay no state taxes on that winning. I keep telling you guys, move to a tax-free state so that your income's not taxed. And hey, if you win the freaking lottery, 380 million freaking dollars, you wouldn't be taxed at 10 or 13%. What are you thinking, man? The second point here is this. This woman would not have won this lottery ticket had it not been for the guy in front of her being so gracious to look at 84 and say, hey, lady, you want to go in front of me? I guess he was worried that she'd die before she could buy the ticket. Okay, folks, in my book called If You're Not First, You're Last, I basically explain, look, man, if you're first in line, you don't give it up to an 84-year-old. I know that might sound you know, without compassion and, and, and uncaring and not sensitive. Hey, when you're buying a lottery ticket, get in, get out as quick as possible. If you're not first, you're last. In this case, I hope 84 gives this guy a little squeeze of the cheese, please. Let's find out how gracious 84 is with her 380 
to the guy that got out of line to get her in the line to buy the ticket that won the money where she don't pay any state taxes in Florida. Showing up means showing up. It don't mean you got to the office. You understand? It doesn't mean you came to work. For me, showing up means I show up. I've been showing up since I was 25 years old, man. Before that, I wasn't showing up. I was showing off. I was acting a fool, being a fool. High school, I didn't show up. I went to class, I never showed up. My body went in the room. See, showing up doesn't mean you got there. Showing up means you got there, and then you showed up again, and then you showed up again, and then you showed up again. It means you show up for the class, you show up for the homework, you show up for the class, you show up for the homework, you show up for the test, you freaking get a perfect grade. It means you keep showing up to the next level. And I hear a lot of people talking about showing up, you know, showing up's not everything. Let me tell you something, showing up, when you show up the right way, Johnny, you got to put your seatbelt on. When you show up the right way, when you show up the right way, showing up is 100% of success. So you gotta keep showing up. Showing up means you're looking for deeper levels to show up, to pay attention. That's what I do every day. Every day I come to work, I'm like, show up, man. Show up for every little problem. Show up for every little opportunity. Show up for every little little new nuance, little angle, little particle, little movement. That's why I see all this stuff. Why is that not cleaned up? Why is this not cleaned up? Why, what's it, why didn't somebody pick that up? Who's that new person here? Hey, are you feeling all right today? How many times have I asked you that before? You all right today? I know it's the little things. It's simple, it costs nothing to do this, show up. It costs you nothing. And it makes all the difference, man, showing up. You'll see things that no one else sees. And, and you know, the good news is anybody can do this. You just gotta make a commitment to show up. My wealth ultimately is not the money I have, it's the knowledge I have and the belief I have in myself. The same thing for you. But I want to take you on this trip because look, number one, you got to visualize it. You got to be able to see it in your mind like possibility. Second thing is you got to see it, you know, in the physical universe. You can explain to me what a Bougainville is. You can explain to me what a beach is. You can explain to me what uh, the gym looks like on the second floor in Cabo San Lucas at this beautiful hotel we're at. But until I visually, visually, physically put an image to the ocean, to the whales, to the sunshine, to the mountains, until I visually see it, it doesn't become real. Third thing you wanna do, number one, see it in your mind. Uh, I, was, uh, I was doing a call today with Percy Miller, uh, Master P. And he's like, first thing you gotta do is see it in your mind. He grew up in extreme poverty in the projects. And he says, Grant, the first thing I had to do was I had to see it in my mind that I could get out. Second thing I had to do was see a picture of it in the physical universe. Uh, that's how valuable the internet is today is that you get to see things that maybe are way outside your price range. You can see the Lambo, the Rolls, the big house, the trip. You can see the possibility of Elon going to Mars, you know, and, and all of a sudden all those things expand possibilities. So number one, you got to see it in your mind. Two, you got to see it in the physical universe. And this also includes other people, examples of other people that are doing great things. I'm not just talking about physical manifestation. I'm not talking about stuff. I'm not talking about watches and bracelets and rings and houses and cars. I'm talking about how can you actually manifest something in the real world that you have in your mind? How do you turn an idea into reality? And uh, these things that I'm sharing with you will make, will make it a possibility. Uh, when you dig deep on them, though, it's like, okay, well, how do I get closer to people that are doing those things? Because the third thing is you got to get closer to the thing you want. If you want a Gulf Stream or if you want to solve the water problem on planet Earth, you're going to have to get closer, physically closer, step on, not just see with your eyes in a magazine or on the Internet. You need to put your feet in the sand, put your feet on the jet. Now that might mean that you got to go fuel jets for a while. You got to go work at an aviation company, an airport, and actually fuel them, clean them, wash them. Maybe you got to be a flight attendant on them. Put your feet next to them. Maybe you have to become a pilot. You're going to have to pay the price though. There is no free lunch here for anybody, including my children. There's no free lunch. There's no way to know what this room feels like, the expansiveness of this room by looking at it on the internet. The moment you can get in it, 
it'll be become even more real to you. The fourth thing is you got to put your feet in this deal. You got to put your feet in this deal. There's a there's a horse down there. I can you can visualize a horse. You can see the horse. You you got to touch the horse. And the fourth thing, I'm sorry, you got to touch the horse. And the fourth thing is you guys got to collaborate with other people, man. You got to get in the room with other people, whether you're serving water. You, if they don't invite you to sit down, then offer them money to sit down with them. If that doesn't work, um, offer to serve them to sit down. Okay, this is a story of my life could be wrapped up in these four things right here. Number one, see it in my mind. Number two, see it in the physical universe, like see it in in some not physical but in metaverse, on the internet, in a magazine, a picture of it. Third, get closer to it. Put your feet on it, on the plane, on the horse, on the beach, in the hotel. If I got to go work there to do it and the fourth thing is you got to network with people that have stuff okay again uh i spent some time this week with uh dame dash she's like look you got to get close to the action you got to get with the people that are making the moves you cannot make the moves from your own neighborhood uh percy miller told me you cannot make the moves from the projects you got to move from the projects not make the moves in the project quit working street corners Quit selling just a product and start hanging out with people that have scaled their think, their ideas into a reality. You have to prepare for inflation hitting you. And look, I just want to give you a heads up on this thing. It's happening right now. I believe we're already in a recession, not to be a doomsday guy, because I think that there's ways for you to take advantage of this. But I just passed one, two, three, four, five, six shops and no, nobody's in them. So the American consumer has like $18 trillion between cash accounts and money markets. You can't get negative right now when you see the bad news. This is an opportunity for you and your family to actually expand, not contract. So you're gonna see bad news in the headlines everywhere. Once the, the politicians start allowing uh, the mass media to actually distribute the bad news. And we're not talking about Ukraine and COVID. We're not talking about abortion uh, 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 rulings because all that is just distraction for the bigger problem, which is the economy. The economy is problematic, okay? You got the Fed pushing interest rates, a uh, half a point yesterday. Uh, there was a rebound in the stock market. This morning I wake up, the stock market rolls over by a thousand points, okay? There's going to be blood in the market. So I'm going to do a training on this. I'm going to give you a few tips right now, but I'm going to click, I'm going to give you a link to a training for those of you who actually want to do something about this and not just hear the bad news and be woken up. First thing is you got to wake up. You got to wake up to what's happening. You got to know that, hey, what do I do now? What do I do if this happens? One, do not buy into the bad news. Okay. Two, you got to expand into the opportunity, and it's very, very difficult to do. Uh, you've heard of wealthy people doing this before, how they take advantage of situations. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do that, whether you have cash or no, you don't have cash, whether you have credit or don't have credit. Because during times of contraction, what happens is, for instance, there's 32 million small businesses in America. Many of you are going out trying to start a new business where what you ought to do is just kind of slide sideways and go buy one, the neighbor next door to you. I mean, from laundry mats to plumbers to internet businesses to coaching businesses, you name it, chiropractors, dentists, like in every sector that you're involved in right now in your business or your interest or your passion, I'll promise you there are thousands Thousands, not one or two, but thousands of small businesses like yours that are similar to your passion, that would feed your passion, that already have branding, already have marketing built in, already have a name, already have a location, already have revenue, already have credit lines that you can literally just slide into. Okay, but you're not going to do that. You're not going to do that if all you're doing is buying into bad news. So number one, you can't buy into the bad news because... Remember, all bad news, sooner or later, is beat out by the need to survive and the economy to go on. The economy will always go on, okay? Not just here in America, but around the world. Always, 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 we always get on the other side of bad news. So the first thing to do is you gotta keep your head out of the garbage dump. You gotta stay positive. And trust me, when it goes negative, it is not easy to stay positive.
People always like, oh yeah, I can stay positive on my own. Probably not, because you're not going to be on your own. You're going to be surrounded by bad news everywhere. So number two, you got to think about how do you expand despite the fact that you don't have money and you don't have credit, or you do have money and you do have credit, but you don't want to use either one because you're terrified, and you will be. The third thing you have to figure out to do, okay, is exactly what sectors will survive long term. What sectors are going to win through contractions? Because what happens in a contraction, what happens is weak businesses get squeezed out, weak names get squeezed out, okay? A weak operators get squeezed out, and the strong come in and take over that. Either the technology takes over and disrupts the space, or a person, typically a person or an operator comes in and then scales that business. Now, what I'm going to look to do here in the next couple of years is actually accelerate my expansion accelerate my expansion because I know how to operate. I know the four things you have to do in a business to make a business successful. There's only four things you must do to keep a business, one, profitable, two, expanding, and three, flourishing. There's four things and only four things, okay? I don't have time right now because I'm with my family, uh, but but if, when you click the link below, what I'll do is I'll give you a free training on those four things that you have to do. Look, you'll get through this. I promise you, you're gonna get through this. The question is, you're gonna get through it and you're gonna do great. You're gonna flourish and prosper. You're gonna be like these businesses, waiting, waiting for traffic. Last thing I'm gonna tell you is this, okay? Don't get stuck in mechanics. When I'm writing my goals down, I do not know how I'm going to do it. So I merely sit down. Like I, I remember for years I would write down, I own a helicopter. I don't even know where this concept came from. I own a helicopter. I own a helicopter. I own, I own a helicopter. Every once in a while it would show up. It would show up on a Wednesday and not show up for uh, when I'm writing my goals down, right? So I'm waking up in the morning. I wake up in the morning and I write my goals down. And one day I write, I own a helicopter. I think back then it was, uh, I, I learned how to fly a helicopter. Okay? It was stupid. It was completely ridiculous. I'm like, where did that come from? It just kind of floated into my mind. I wrote it down. Okay, I own a jet. I'm like, man, I'm just being stupid right now. I own a jet and two helicopters. I don't know how that happened. I didn't, I didn't know anything about jets. Uh, I would not achieve any of this, by the way, until I was 53 years old, 54 years old. First private jet I was ever on was the one uh, uh, we bought. I, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know how they fly. I didn't know how they work. I didn't know what the cost of a hangar was. I know nothing. Don't get lost in the mechanics. I didn't know the fuel cost. I didn't know what it cost to buy one. Do you finance them? Do you pay cash? Do you get a tax rate? I knew nothing when I started writing this down. The helicopter would come after the jet. Okay, I bought a helicopter. I didn't know why. So the point of that story is, when you're writing your goals down, literally sit down with a blank sheet of paper, first thing you wake up in the morning and you just start zip, 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 zip. You write through them. Like to, this morning I wrote down 40 billion in real estate, okay? Public, I write down one word, I'm going public. See, I know now that this, this is in present tense and or past tense. I write it in present or past tense. I'm going public, okay? I wrote down recently uh, a congressional hearing People are like, what, what's a congressional hearing? Dude, I'm so big now, they called me into Congress. I'm a, they're going to have a congressional hearing. They're going to drill me, okay? Oh, yeah, then I wrote this down. Uh, uh, a political office. Now, I don't know why. I don't know why I'm writing that down. I don't know how to achieve that. I don't know what it would mean. I don't know what it looks like. I don't get stuck in the mechanics. Don't worry about it. Commit first. Commit first, man. Just keep committing and keep fueling and keep writing it down. Because you made it this far in a video, I want to celebrate you. Most people start and don't finish. Most people never actually follow through. Most people say they want something, but they don't ever do the work to actually get it. But you are different. You are special. Believe Nation, you made it here all the way to the end and I love you. So it's a special celebration if you put a hashtag believe down in the comments below on this video, I will showcase you and celebrate you somewhere on the screen in a future video because you are awesome. For 10 more amazing rules from Gary Vaynerchuk, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. 
continue to believe, and I'll see you there. I decided to build my dad's business for him for the first 12 years of my career. That required huge patience from somebody who thought they were great. I didn't even start, quote unquote, until I was 34. Patience is huge, it's huge.